What's up guys, Vince the Longineer here. Today, it is time to seriously throw down. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's get started. So I recently did a video on the seven steps you need to take in order to successfully complete a fall overseeding or renovation project. And I started with a soil test kit to understand exactly what soil conditions I was working with and take a data-driven approach to my overseeding this fall. Um, the second step we talked about was incorporating some biostimulants. Now I've been incorporating biostimulants on a regular basis. So for this application, I'm not going to apply anything today, but I just want you to know that the biostimulants are the secret ingredient or the secret sauce, and they really help um, improve the soil, chelate the soil to allow for nutrients to be readily available for the plants. Um, then we have other biostimulants like liquid dethatching and liquid aeration. Now these don't replace the mechanical methods for dethatching and the core aeration, but they do help. Um, and actually, I haven't been able to dethatch uh, this week because the weather got in the way. Um, I was able to get the core aeration done, and I thought that that was most important. And as I was pulling the cores, I noticed that there really wasn't that much thatch at the top layer of soil. Um, but I'll show you a comparison between what a thick thatch layer looks like and what my thatch looks like. So you can see the difference and you can understand the reasoning why I'm not dethatching mechanically this year. Um, also, my soil test results came back with acidic soils. So as I was core aerating, I did incorporate calcitic line and this is SoluCal. Uh, so I put down one 50 pound bag that covers 4,000 square feet to raise the pH. Now today, we are ready to throw down our seed. So I have here Grand Slam GLD Perennial Ryegrass from Seed Superstore. It's a very high quality seed variety, followed by our starter fertilizer, our slow release fertilizer, and then to finish it off, we're gonna to top dress everything with some peat moss and then water, 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 all right? Now, one of the additional items that I have done um, about two weeks ago was I started killing off some of the weeds in the yard. Uh, I had issues with nut sedge and just general broadleaf weeds. I spot sprayed the nut sedge with sedge hammer and I took care of other broadleaf weeds with tenacity. I use the tenacity because it is safe for new seed. All right, so one thing I'm going to do before I start throwing the seed down is I'm going to take one pass with my mower and I'm going to try and break up some of these clumps. Um, not a totally necessary step, but um, I just want to make sure that I'm breaking these clumps up so that seed doesn't start to like grow in, in the clumps. Uh, because once we throw down the seed and put down everything else uh, and start watering, we don't want to step on the lawn all that much. Um, also, it'll give me an opportunity to, to lower the height of cut once more um, so that we can really help the seed take its time to germinate and start to grow uh, before we, we do our first mow with the new grass seedlings. All right, so I just finished mowing the yard. I uh, took it down a few more notches with my rotary mower. Um, I was able to break up a few more clumps from the plugs that were left on the yard. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's going to help. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scalp the problem spot behind me here. If you've been following along, that's been a problem spot for me most of the summer. Um, so I'm gonna scalp that to about the low, uh, I think I'll do the lowest setting on the mower. Uh, and I'll make a nice rectangular area um, to keep it nice and clean and neat, but scalp that whole area so that I can uh, really prepare that for the overseeding. And um, I also have a few more areas around by, you know, the park lanes and stuff that need some help, so I'll scalp those as well. But other than that, um, we're going to be ready to go with the seed and the fertilizer, so let's go do that.
is what the scalped area is looking like. You can see it's brown, as expected, but we're gonna have some good seed to soil contact, so that's most important. There's not much thatch build up here. I'm gonna scalp this area right here. This is where we just sprayed for some weeds. It's a little bit bare, so I'm just gonna scalp down. I guess I might as well scalp an area right there too to get nice, nice coverage and patch that up. And then here is the other area by my driveway. All of this right here will need to be scalped. I'll make a nice, nice straight line down here, square it out, come back up this way, and, uh, and clean that up a bit. And then the last area that's been a problem spot for me has been right here. So these are small areas, but you know I'm just going to go one pass probably with the mower, scalp that down just to really clean that up. All right, so here are the rest of the scalped areas. I did a spot right here till that corner and then over. This was a, a weak spot with the grass pulling up, so I thought let's pay extra careful attention here. And then we did a spot, a couple spots right here. So we'll uh, fix this up. And then a spot here that had some nuts edge. We'll fix that up. And then over here, we have a few more spots. Here's a little guy right here. And then here's a guy at the corner here. So we'll clean all this up nicely. It should come in really nice. And then everything else will just get general overseed, uh, fertilizer, peat moss. But I'll go a little bit heavier with the seed in some of these areas, these scalped areas, um, to really uh, bring that back to life. Okay, so for today, we have 25 pounds of perennial ryegrass, Grand Slam GLD. We'll be throwing that down at four pounds per thousand square feet. So I have 4,000 square feet, so that's 16 pounds. So the remaining amount of seed I'll use to cover in some of those areas, and I'll save a little bit just in case if I need to go over and cover any, uh, any bare spots or any areas that didn't germinate successfully. Um, once we throw that down, we will then hit it again with uh, the starter fertilizer, cover that evenly over everything. Now that bag covers 5,000 square feet. I'm gonna go a little heavy. I'm gonna throw the whole bag down evenly over my 4,000 square feet. And then on top of that, we're gonna then put down the melorganite. I'll put down two bags. Again, two bags covers 5,000 square feet. So I'm a little heavy and that's gonna be okay. We're gonna be a little bit heavy. The, the actual, the melorganite is non-burning, so I'm not too concerned about that. And then, after that, this is gonna be the messy part of the job, is spreading down this peat moss. Now I have about six bags of this stuff. I hope I don't have to use all of it, but I thought I'd get more than, uh, than I needed, uh, just in case, to be sure, because I don't wanna, once I put the seed down, I don't want to, um, you know, hang it out to dry, right? Uh, you gotta work quickly, don't let the seed dry out. Um, get it down, get it covered, and start watering it immediately. Uh, that'll give you the best results, the best germination percentage rate, and an overall better successful overseeding application. All right, so when throwing down seed, it's important to understand the different types of spreaders you can use to spread seed. So over on the left here, we have a drop spreader. And that's exactly what it does. It literally just drops right between the wheels and that's it. On the right, we have what's called a rotary or a broadcast spreader. And the way this works is it literally broadcasts. As you move, this spins and it broadcasts the seed or the fertilizer in a, in a fan pattern um, to spread out the seed. Uh, so we don't want to use this when we are doing like a trim pass or going around mulch beds because this, even with the edge guard on for seed, the seed will still go past the edge guard. This will still spread seed in the mulch beds and then you'll have grass popping up where you don't want to see it. Um, so for the trim pass, I'll be using this first on its lowest setting. I'll do a complete trim pass. I'll go around the trees that have mulch and then I'll come back with the rotary to finish everything up. 
All right. So let's throw her down. Check that out. 25 pounds of Grand Slam GLD. Alright, so we just finished putting down the seed and I want to show you kind of the density of the seed and how much we put down. So uh, in some of these areas that I scalped, I just want to show you kind of what it looks like here. So you can see that's kind of the density we're looking for. I think that's going to be appropriate. Here's another spot here. You can see it's not... It's not overcrowding. The seeds aren't on top of each other. And that's what we're looking for. Some areas I got a little bit heavier handed with it and that's totally fine too. Over here you can see kind of what we're, what we're up against here. See this is, if it's a little too, too dense you could just kind of 
fan it out, but that's not too bad. We'll come back over with uh, malorganite and the starter fertilizer, followed by the peat moss next. And I do want to just show you real quick, out of a 25 pound bag, this is what I've got left. Um, it still weighs about five pounds. So, um, you know, I didn't get out of scale or anything to measure this out. It's all kind of by feel and experience. Um, but I mean, you could use a scale or something to, um, you know, weigh it out. Um, but I'm just going off of experience and, and feel. Um, I, I feel pretty confident that I got that four pounds per thousand square feet down, six, about 16 pounds total, and then a couple pounds here and there in those um, more bare spots to uh, really cover those up nicely with the seed. Alright guys, so now it's time for the dirtiest part of the job, and that's spreading peat moss. And I'm serious because this is going to be a very dirty job. Expect to be covered in peat moss from almost head to toe. I'll be using a face mask uh, to keep the dust out of my, uh, my lungs. So some of the tools we'll be using today include a wheelbarrow, a landscaping rake, a shovel, my hands, and a whole bunch of peat moss. Let's get started. All right, so I've got an open bag of peat moss already here. What I like to do is, um, this is all compressed, so I like to put it in the wheelbarrow so that it can loosen up, then I can easily spread it with a shovel.
All right. So it was a little bit of a mess, but we got it done. About six bags of peat moss thrown down. Went a little heavier on the uh, spots that we uh, scalped earlier. Uh, I think it looks good. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. And that's, uh, that's what it looks like when it's spread out as evenly as we could with the equipment that we had today. You probably don't see it as much in the areas where it's a little bit thicker. But that's because we, uh, we spread it out with the landscape rake and the fine particles just fall right down in between the grass blades. But here you can see it. So this is good because this will be a good visual indicator of when it needs to be watered. Right now it's dry. That's what it looks like when it's dry. There will be a stark contrast. It'll be a lot darker when it's wet. And the goal is to keep the seed moist at all times until it starts to germinate. We'll probably put the watering schedule on for probably a full week, uh, at maybe three times a day, um, morning, sometime in the afternoon and the early evening. I'll come out and uh, hand water some areas that I can't reach with, uh, with my uh, hose. And uh, yeah, we'll start setting everything up right now. All right, guys, so we did it. Threw down a whole bunch of seed, got down our fertilizer, and got down our peat moss, all in a day's work. Uh, really looking forward to the results. I should see germination in about four days. I have a few spots in mind that, I'm, that are gonna be considered my observation points, so I'll keep an eye out. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see my progress there. Uh, that is at the underscore longineer. Uh, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for joining.